A friend of mine sent me an absolutely chilling article from The Atlantic this week by a guy named McKay Coppins. So what Coppins did is he looked at the opening prayers at Trump rallies and he analyzed them both textually and theologically. And then he used those prayers as sort of a proxy for the way that evangelicals talk and think about Donald Trump. See, back in 2016 and through the beginning of his presidency, it was common to hear Christians compare Trump to biblical characters like Cyrus or David, right? Flawed men that were still vessels for the will of God. But you don't really hear those comparisons anymore. They've shifted from excusing his immorality to just pretending it doesn't exist. And along the way, he's turned from a flawed guy that can still implement God's design to a messianic figure who is God's design. They've gone from praying for Trump to do God's will to praying that God won't get in the way of Trump's will. And this fits with the larger theological shift we've seen over the years, right? Christians have been key to Trump's political viability since he kicked off his first campaign, but it hasn't always been the same Christians. Back in 2016, the Christians closest to him, the ones that were advising him and opening his rallies and making him look good in front of other Christians, they were mostly prosperity gospel preachers. They were televangelists. They were the chief opportunists of Christianity. They saw a grifter, and in that, they saw a kindred spirit. So they attached themselves to him, and they anointed him, both figuratively and literally, and they gave the nation's most notorious philanderer a patina of piety. And he needed that then. But now he needs something else. Now he needs an army of mindless fucking zombies that will carry out his will, even when that will is naked insurrection. And suddenly his choice of Christians has changed as well. Coppin summarizes the doctrinal demographics of the people doing his opening prayers now as, quote, overwhelmingly evangelical with disproportionate representation from Pentecostalism, end quote, which he describes as, quote, a charismatic branch of Christianity that emphasizes supernatural faith healing and speaking in tongues, end quote. Because he is himself a Christian and he can't exactly say Christianity's most gullible class of lunacy, but that is what he fucking meant, okay? And you don't just see this in the prayers, it's in his rhetoric, too. Even back in 2016, he was on about American carnage, but somehow now the threat is even greater. It was already existential, but now it's apocalyptic. He stands not between you and the downfall of the nation, but between you and the downfall of humanity's reign on Earth. He's not just sufficient, but chosen. He can't just protect America. He can't just save America. He can redeem America. He can turn it back from the sinful ways that forced God to withdraw his eye from his favored nation in the first place. And obviously that's terrifying, right? Because if God has chosen your candidate, what happens when they lose? These people are already primed for the stolen election lies. And even when they weren't, he still managed to gin up a deadly insurrection over them. So what happens if instead of stealing an election from Donald Trump, the Democrats and the deep state are stealing it from God? Right. And what happens when the people handing over power aren't Republicans that you're still just getting used to the idea of wanting to hang, but the very Democrats that you're accusing of election fraud to begin with and have been demonizing for the last four years. But of course, as we all know, and as Coppins points out in his article, the real fear isn't what happens if they lose. Coppins closes his article with an excerpt from a guy by the name of Joel Tenney. So Tenney is a 27 year old evangelist that delivered an opening prayer for a Trump rally in Coralville, Iowa. And before the prayer, he delivered a short sermon where he accused Biden of weaponizing the justice system, stealing the election and trying to imprison his opponent. All pretty standard fare for a Trump rally. But then he tossed in this terrifying little nugget, quote, be afraid for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. And when Donald Trump becomes the 47th president of the United States, there will be retribution against all those who have promoted evil in this country. End quote. Trump's already said he wanted to be a dictator on day one. Now, that that comment has actually been blown out of proportion to some degree. He specifically said the two things he wanted to do as a dictator. They were close the border and open drilling. But the degree to which his supporters have invoked that authoritarian language cannot be overblown. They legitimately want a dictator so that they don't have to muck around with Congress and the courts in their effort to remake education, outlaw same-sex marriage, and turn the clock back a century on women's rights. They want a dictator to implement mandatory Bible classes, forbid trans people from shitting in public and make their fucking niece with the nose ring stop winning so many goddamn arguments on Facebook. They want a dictator to avenge the death of their cultural monopoly. Hell, they don't just want it. They pray for it. 